<laughs> go ahead and admit it. You totally thought I was dead. I'm not dead. It's just been a, it's been a crazy summer. It's been a crazy summer. So I hope that everybody else is uh, having a good summer. And I can't complain. We did go on vacation and that was super fun. But I swear, I feel like between my dog, to my one of my kids, to me, like just everybody has been having to go see doctors about stuff. It's just, it's been, a little, it's been a little weird, but I think life has settled back to normal, <laughs> at least a little bit, and uh, I'm the only one in the house right now. I know, it never happens, so we may have to be, uh, I don't know, rethinking gin and spin to perhaps like gin and coffee, because um, both of my kids are in preschool right now, which is uh, exciting, because I'm actually, like, nobody's here. I don't have to go get anything for anybody. It's magical, and the, the house is really quiet, um, so just me and Suzanne. So anyhow, what uh, I want to know what everybody else has been up to. So what I've been up to is, um, or well, first off, since I'm usually supposed to show you what I've been working on, and we feel around on the back of the couch here, I have been, and this camera's probably going to fall on me, because it always does. <laughs> I have been making some really cool, I've gotten some uh, rougher fiber, and this is a, uh, it's Icelandic wool that I, Killian and I actually processed. It's um, white, gray, and black. So it's really cool, but it's got a lot of the, uh, sorry, stupid camera, natural, even though, like I said, what we, we washed it, um, Killian helped. She did a really good job. So if you have a four-year-old, they can totally wash fiber. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> and, um... We washed it, and then, I don't know, I experimented. I tried combing it with the Big Scary Wolverine combs, and that worked pretty good. And then I tried carding it with the big hand combs. Hi, Gail! <laughs> and then I was like, I'm going to run it through the drum carter. So then we ran it through the drum carter, and it still ended up in a bag in a heap. Oh, stupid camera. So... This is kind of the final process, is it is, it, it's clean and it's combed out, but you can definitely still see it's got a lot of the natural, like, lock structure, which I like, kind of, like, hidden in here. And this fiber I got from my friend Tori at Feathertail Fiber Arts, which, if you're remotely interested in, um, kind of more raw fiber, <laughs> not so much just your, like, you know, I, I bought it at the store or from me, like, braids and merino, but if you want to, like, step outside the box, I totally recommend Feathertail Fiber Arts, and she has a, um, you can get a discount if you sign up for her email list, which is great. So, anyhow, so what that's been turning into, like I said, I just have been kind of stressed out. This, it was black. This was just the plain black one, and then I added in, because also, should sorry, I'm rambly, mention, I had mentioned in a video that I hated mohair, and Tori was like, you shouldn't hate mohair, mohair is fabulous, you've just never had good mohair, and I didn't know that there was a difference, but whatever it is that they're calling mohair that they sell, you know, and like the itchy yarn that you can get at like craft stores or even like nicer yarn shops that claims to be mohair, and it's horrible and makes me rashy. I don't know what that stuff is, but it's not this. Check out my stash of, uh, I got this from Tori at Feathertail Fiber Arts too. Apparently, this is good mohair. I didn't know that uh, there was a difference, but it's it's magical. It's really soft, and this it's like in a lock structure, and it's fun because it's a little bit more expensive, but when you're spinning it, you can pull these little locks apart, and so you get, and like the structure stays in there, so you can use like just a little tiny bit like that, and you still get like the kinky structure, and it's like shiny. Like look at this stuff, super shiny. So I've been fully converted. I uh, now like mohair a whole lot. I just don't like crappy mohair, and I, I didn't know there was a difference. So I'm here to like you know preach to the choir. <laughs> I have. So yeah, that was my uh, my rambling that didn't what was out of order there was what I've been doing is I've been spinning the uh, you can see the mohair into um, like I said this other so this is the black Icelandic and the white all the white in this is like the uh, mohair locks that are spun in. So I've been doing some kind of like rough spinning. And I think I'm going to make some little, I'm wanting to make, it, besides just keeping it for myself, some, uh, like, maybe little weaver bundles. or like I like to use lots of different little mini skeins and, like, knitting projects. I don't know. That's, like I said, it's been kind of stressful around here. And if you hear, like, hacking in the background, it's my poor dog. She's in heart failure, and apparently they get the hacky cough. So I don't have, like, an old man who's dying in my living room or anything. It's Suzanne. So... 
anyhow, like I said, I've been doing some uh, stress spinning, and this is how it's been turning out. So this was with the black. This was the gray, the fiber I just showed you, but with the mohair locks, like, added in. And then this is just straight mohair locks. I know. She's doing okay, though. The vet had me convinced she was, like, about to go, and I cried for two days. And then we put her on medicine, and she's doing great. So she's still kind of old and weird, but we love her. She was our first child, and um, the medicine seems to be really helping her. So she's doing good. So all happy things, but it's, it's been a hectic summer. But this is just the straight locks in yarn form. And uh, as promised, I will actually spin something. So let me adjust the camera. You can actually see what I'm doing. Like I said, I haven't gotten to actually do one of these in forever. So this is the, um, I said the fiber I just showed you. And let's see. And I'm really spinning this. I've got it on the biggest whirl here in the back. And I'm really letting a lot of the natural lock structure um, stay in the yarn instead of trying to make it look all perfect. And then if I've been adding in, let me grab it, the uh, little mohair locks here. And like I said, you can really kind of pull them apart. And what I've been doing is just putting like one end of the lock in with uh, my fiber as I'm spinning it. And then just, I'm trying to kind of purposely keep the mohair part loose so that it kind of wraps around and has like a little tail. Because I've just been happy with how the, the tail looks there. And um, like I said, I've been really happy with how this has been turning out. So let's get a little bit more mohair. And you can kind of, if you leave the tail out and then spin down past it, you'll get like kind of the little hangy outy parts, which uh, that's a technical term there for you, the hangy outy parts of the fiber. <laughs> so that's what I've been working on is, um, like I said, I think I'm just making some like coordinating mini skein bundles out of these things. And they're going to be all cool and have, I've been doing a lot of lock spinning, I guess. So that's what I've been up to. And that's what I've been spinning. And it definitely, if you've spent most of your spinning uh, life trying to get fiber to be like perfectly straight. And uh, this is definitely, will be a departure for you is keeping the, uh, like I said, lock spinning I'd never done too much of, but I'm really trying to leave a lot of the natural structure in here. And, uh, because I'm really enjoying the colors and the texture on that. And I won't keep everybody all day. Oh, there's my head. The other exciting announcement is, um, I have been, if you follow me on anything else you may have known here in Knoxville, I've been teaching, uh, local like drop spindle workshops and they've been super fun and everybody has liked them and people that didn't live close to me have been complaining that I don't live in Knoxville so I can't do that so <laughs> I actually put on my uh, thinking hat and figured out how to make a like an online course version of my drop spindle workshop which this is the spindle used in the uh, online course it's cool it's hand carved uh, birch nothing too fancy very practical not too expensive I really like it. it is from North Carolina close to where we live so this is the spindle so this was my prop to talk about this but um I do it's on my website and it is just under drop spindle course and I will put a link under this video here momentarily but if you at all would like to learn how to drop spindle or you have drop spindled and then you went onto a wheel and were like eh, drop spindling's for punks I thought that too until I actually started drop spindling more <laughs> because I was doing um you know, I was asked to teach these classes, so I had to, like, buff up on my drop spindling, and I actually got to where I really liked it, like, going back to it after spinning on a wheel all the time. It's definitely, it's a different animal, and it's cool because I like to put it in my kitchen, and you, like, pick it up and put it down, much more like knitting than, like, a wheel where, you know, you got to sit, and there's, you know, more involved. So, uh, I really enjoyed it. It has been a fun new thing to learn, and so I made a little course. So, it doesn't matter where you live. If you would like to, uh, you enjoy my ramblings and uh, <laughs> you would like a non-serious approach to uh, learning how to drop spindle that is, you know, more lighthearted and not super scary. It is designed to go from like, I've literally never held a spindle to uh, like, now I know what I'm doing. And I even, I polled people and I was like, what do you want to know in a drop spindle course? And people wanted to know what to do with the yarn after you took it off, like kind of how to set it. 
and get it into skeins and whatnot. So I do have a bonus video on that. And also people wanted to know how to chain ply or Navajo ply, which I know how to do. Y'all saw my video. <laughs> I have learned how to do it. So I have successfully Navajo plied on the wheel and I've gotten so comfortable with it that I was like, well, I'm going to figure out how to Navajo ply on a spindle. And it's probably, I'm probably doing it really weird, but it's how I think it is best. It worked best for me and I think was easiest to explain to people. So I've even included a video <laughs> on how to uh, Navajo ply or chain ply if you're feeling really bold. Uh, onto a drop spindle, which I actually turned out pretty good. So I was proud of myself. <laughs> so anyhow, I will drop a link on that. So um, if you have a drop spindle at home or you need one, I have those too. But uh, if you like my videos and you want to learn to drop spindle, I have the answer for that. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm just going to spin for a little bit more. What's uh, There are people on here. What have y'all been up to? Anybody? Anybody doing fun yarn projects this uh this time of year is everybody off uh, enjoying the warmer weather. Even though I think some of you might live like in Australia or places where maybe it's getting cooler now, so you never know. Spinning, you're, okay. Yeah, spinning, I, I know some people are really like seasonal with yarn stuff, but I like spinning obviously all the time. And uh, what are you spinning on? Still doing my flea study. Ooh, what's a flea study? Is that where you get like one fleece and then you really process it out and like learn all the uh, ins and outs of what makes it cool? I have never done one of those. My friend Barb, uh, who is one of my favorite local suppliers, when she got into uh, her fiber farm and business, she went out, I think she did, I think she used the word flea study, but she studied all the different types of, uh, I don't know, fleeces. Uh, let's see, have over 40 different uh, ounces. Ooh. So do you have a favorite one yet? So I'm always open. Let's see. Knitting. I live in Pennsylvania. I'm spinning bamboo. Oh yeah. Well, bamboo and cotton. Cotton, I can spin it, but, uh, ones okay 40 different ones which is your favorite uh fleece then pauline of your 40 different ones and yeah no cotton spinning and here i've got to my uh i took off my tension block on my wheel on my king b which i never do because i was making a video to help somebody who's having tension block issues so i had to show like how to flip it around and ever since i did i have not been able to get the tension block exactly like i want it and it's been driving me crazy so <laughs> text on me Texel and Mule. Huh, I don't think I've ever tried either of those. I really like trying new different kinds of uh, fleeces, which is what I've been, like I said, having fun doing this summer. No, I do need to get more serious about planning my uh, yarns that I'm going to put out for fall. So I know other people do get into, uh, you know, all of those who are like fair weather yarn and fiber people come back to us, you know, when the weather turns cooler. So... I was thinking about that driving home from preschool. I was like, I've been making like courses and like spinning funny lock yarn. I need to think more seriously about what I'm going to do for my fall collection. So what do y'all like? Two ply, single ply? Is everybody into like funky lock yarn these days? Uh, what type of yarn do y'all like to spin or craft with in the fall? I don't know. I'm apparently very ADD with the yarn, so I like it all. Apparently, here's some more little locks. But it is very weird being in the house by myself with it being all quiet. So let's see. let's get that out like I want. Okay, I think I finally got my tension block right. Those of you who spin will appreciate having one's tension block or tension strap not where you want it. It's not a good thing. For spinning ticks was easy. Some mule very softly. Huh. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know, Pauline, if you are in any of our... Uh, we do have a Facebook group, uh, Handspun Yarn Love, that's linked to the Crafty Housewife Yarns uh, page. But I love seeing pictures of stuff people are doing. We've got spinners and weavers and felters and all sorts of people. And, uh, you know, I always love seeing what people are working on. And Facebook seems to be the easiest way. That or Instagram, I found to, like, see people's pictures. So if you are on any of those and have cool pictures of what you're doing, uh, please tag me in it or post it in somewhere. Oh, my phone. 
phone. <laughs> okay, well, I think I may have just ruined that. Uh, my phone, which is my camera, jumped off at me, and now it's being weird. <laughs> oh, am I upside down? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay, there you go. See, like most random. Okay, I think we're back. I think I'm. <laughs> it like attacked me and then wanted, was like fussing at me that the orientation wasn't right. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I guess I should quit. I think this is a good sign that I should quit this video, Paul. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, while my, while my uh, camera is back where it's supposed to be, I think I'm going to call this one quits. But it was so good to see everybody. And so I'm thinking maybe th gin and spins are going to move to earlier in the day. And since I don't normally drink gin at like 10 in the morning, I will, <laughs> will have to change it to like coffee and spin. But uh, I will try to be more regular with getting on here now that, um, you know, life has settled down. Because it's fun to actually have people to talk to. I'm like a stay-at-home mom, like nobody ever talks to me. <laughs> so anyhow, thank you for getting on here. And uh, if you're seeing this later, please uh, post any of your comments below. And I will try to link my course because I'm excited about it. So go check it out. <laughs> Tell me what, know what you think because I'm really nervous about it. So anyhow, thank you, thank you. <laughs>